Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Reproduction. So we will now talk about sexual reproduction. Now let us quickly see what is sexual reproduction. It is the mode of reproduction in which two individuals are formed, in which new individuals are formed from two parents. So here we need two parents. From single parent it cannot form. So whenever I talk of two parents, I also mean that there has to be sex differentiation. There has to be one male, there has to be one female. Right? So here sex is involved. When I say sex, sex is nothing but mating between the two parents. The two parents must fuse with each other. They must meet with each other so that the new organism is formed. So here fusion between the male and female gametes give rise to the new organism. So gamete is nothing but the specialized sex cells. So here new individuals are not exactly identical to the parents. However, they have some similarities to their parents. At the same time, they also have certain new characters which were not present in their parents. For example, in this picture, you can see the color of the eyes of the kids. So, the mother has brown eye, the father has black eye, but this kid has got blue eyes. So, blue eyes are not present in either of the parents, but the kid has it. So, there are some characters which are completely new in the new individuals. Variations occur, so these new characters are nothing but variations, that is differences. And these variations have got a very significant role to play in the long run. So now we will talk about why do we need this mode of reproduction. When we already had asexual mode of reproduction, what was the need of having sexual mode of reproduction? Why can't all the organisms, all the living organisms on earth, they reproduce asexually? Why do they need another mode of reproduction? So let us discuss that. When we know that this sexual mode of reproduction is a relatively slower process because you saw in asexual reproduction how many new organisms were formed. For example, in multiple fission, so many organisms were formed just in, in one shot. Similarly, in case of fragmentation or regeneration, you saw that when an organism was broken into pieces, each piece gave rise to a new organism. So multiple organisms were being formed at one go. But in case of sexual reproduction, we will see that it is a very gradual process and also at a time you do not get plenty of organisms. Right? So that is also, in, so in both the sense, sexual reproduction is a relatively slower process than asexual reproduction as far as multiplication rate is concerned. Now the question is, why sexual reproduction? When we know that we already had a primitive mode of reproduction that is asexual mode, then what was the need of having sexual reproduction? Because the purpose of reproduction is anyways to produce new organisms. So we were able to do that with asexual mode. So why is it that not all living organisms reproduce asexually? Why was this sexual reproduction brought into picture? So let us look at some of the reasons where sexual reproduction has certain advantages which were not present in the asexual mode. First of all, to incorporate variations in species which in turn ensures survival of a species. So this term variation, this was possible only with sexual reproduction. Because in asexual reproduction, the daughter organisms or the new organisms which were produced, that were exactly genetically identical to their parents. So there was no new character being seen in the new organism. There, were, there was no difference in the traits of the new organism. So there was no scope of variation in case of asexual reproduction. So one thing is variation was there in, in sexual reproduction. Now the question is, why is variation so important? So in one of our previous slides, I already told you the significance of variation, right? That variation actually ensures the survival of a species. The example which I discussed in that slide, like we have so many different varieties of dogs today. We have Alsatian, we have so many different types of dogs, right? Now, if suddenly some climatic changes happen, let us suppose if the weather becomes too cold, 
So since now we have so many varieties, at least the varieties with fur will be able to survive. Right? So because of the variation, so these small to small traits have come into picture due to variation. So variation in the long run helps in survival of a species. Variation also helps in the evolution of new species. That means variation over a period of time. Small, small variations when it gets accumulated over a period of time, it altogether gives rise to a new kind of organism. Right? So these are some of the importance of variation because of which it is so important. The next was each individual in a species has its own uniqueness and identity. Okay. So in case of sexual, in case of asexual reproduction, all the organisms were exactly same. So you cannot differentiate between, let us, let us take an example of uh, anything which reproduces asexually, let us suppose hydra. So if hydra reproduces asexually, you will not be able to distinguish between the parent hydra and the daughter hydra because they are going to be exactly the same. So, but in case of sexual reproduction, each individual in a species, even though the species is the same, for example, let us consider human beings. In human beings, all of them have two eyes, one nose, two ears. So everything, that way is the basic structure is the same. Still, each one of us looks so very different, right? So except for the twins who are exactly identical. Other than that, if you see human beings, even though their basic structure is the same, they all belong to the same species, but still they look different. That means each of them has some uniqueness of their own. They have an identity of their own. It is just that they have some similarities of their parents, but they are not exactly identical. So this uniqueness, the word uniqueness is possible only with sexual reproduction. So each person is unique in himself or herself. Right? So this, these were some of the things because of which sexual reproduction came into picture. Now, when I talk of sexual reproduction, DNA copying, DNA becomes one of the most important uh, concept behind sexual reproduction. As I mentioned before also, like before, you cut, before anything gets constructed, whether it is a car or a building, there has to be a blueprint. Similarly, before a, a living organism actually is born, a blueprint of that living organism is also created and that blueprint is nothing but DNA. So DNA copying mechanism is the key concept behind sexual reproduction. That is, the DNA of the parents gets copied and that copy of DNA of the mother and the father then combine to form the DNA of the new organism. Now, if the DNA copying is exactly accurate, in that case, the daughter is going to be identical. But in the real time, the DNA copying or is never accurate. It has certain inaccuracy. And because of those small inaccuracy, those new characters arise or the small variations arise. Right? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.